Hey there, happy May, happy spring from Minnesota. It was a really, really long winter, I'd say six months, and it, we had a very slow start to spring. I mean, really, we had a frost two weeks ago. It was only about 30. That was the last time we had a frost, and now here we are, May 10th. I'm pretty sure we've been frost-free since that time, but temps were still kind of too cold, even into the beginning of May for things like tomatoes. However, got my early crops in like I usually do. Some of them are growing kind of slow still. Um, garlic came up in the middle of April, which was kind of remarkable. I mean, as soon as the snow was, was melted off the beds, the garlic was popping out. And um, the soil temperatures in the garden beds warmed up pretty quickly. I kind of want like 50 degrees soil temps before I transplant my onions and some of these brassicas. And so um, I've gotten ahead in some ways and I'm behind in other ways because of this season. So um, as usual, I just kind of like to kind of lead with what I'm feeling like I wanna kind of stretch my season with this year. Um, I got corn planted the last week in April and it's germinating. And um, I got my earliest snap beans planted on May 1st and that's about two weeks earlier than I normally would. Um, potatoes went in about a week earlier than normal. They went in around May 1st. Uh, no signs of them yet, because I don't really pre-sprout them, but um, asparagus is coming up. And what's interesting is, even though last year felt maybe a little warmer in spring, our asparagus started emerging about five days earlier this year than last year. Uh, the really good thing, the really great news, uh, and this happened last year too, we warmed up slowly for the most part we had about three days in april where we hit 80 uh, and our fruit trees started budding out a bit and then it got cold again and they slowed down and why that's great is that we have a ton of flowers on our plum trees that are open right now there are pollinators all over them the garden smells incredible and several of our apple trees three of them our snow sweet our williams pride and our harrelson are loaded with fruit blossoms that are gonna push open here. I'm looking at them any minutes, probably tomorrow it looks like I see some flowers open. So the orchard on the north side looks incredible. We lost one apricot tree yes, last year, but the other five trees are fully uh, trained out on all four leaders. So the double horizontal cordon looks just incredible. Um, I moved some trellises around, so i um, always trying to kind of mix up where things are going, but um, I'm going to show you kind of what else is going on around here. I'll walk you through what we've got planted and kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the other plans I have for the space that appears to be empty for the moment. So, okay, so as I walk you around, I really want to try and highlight some of the things I've interplanted because I've run out of space. I know that sounds crazy, but with wanting to grow all of our own dry beans for the year and potatoes for the year and as many onions as we can, we've got more garlic in the ground this year. Um, and I'm allocating more space to tomatoes, not necessarily growing more, but I'm giving my determinate paste tomatoes a little more square footage this year. So all of those things kind of have an additive property and they end up reducing the total amount of square footage I have left to play with. So let's take this bed for example. This is where I planted three rows. I always plant these three beans together. Gold Rush, Velour, Maxibel, Hericovert, uh, Yellow Wax, uh, a Purple, and then uh, a French Filet. Uh, the Velours, or not, sorry, the Gold Rush are popping up and the other ones are planted like literally right in between this spinach. This is overwintered spinach. This is Matador. I planted it early or mid-September last year. I've already harvested it once and I'm gonna have to come through, give it a really good harvest here this week. So the idea is I'm gonna probably end up pulling at least this middle row out once those two rows of beans get up and germinate and start growing because I want them to kind of take over the space. But in the meantime, while they're germinating, I'm getting an extra week to two weeks of spinach harvest. Spinach is not really happy right now in this heat, so um, I'm okay cutting it short because we have spinach in two other places in the garden. Okay, so this is the second place where we have spinach and it's potentially gonna be interplanted. This is gonna be my cucamelon trellis. The reason I put this where it is is because it's just kind of where this triangle bed narrows. And so we will have access to the cucamelons from both sides. If you've grown them, you know 
that that is kind of a requisite because they can be pretty sneaky. So that spinach will stay in place as long as it can, but it is likely gonna come out. Um, the cucumelons aren't gonna go on the ground for a little bit. And then I did a ton of inner planting in here. I added more head lettuce on the edge. These are my Napa cabbage in here with direct seeded cilantro. I seeded that in March. You can see this one right here just never took off. The rest of them look great. These kinds of things pain me that might, it's not a perfect planting. I've got lettuce that's just about ready to harvest here. Haven't done it yet. I actually haven't harvested much of anything out of this bed. I've got bok choy that's harvestable, little holes from the flea beetles. I don't mind those. And our interplanted radishes with these tiara cabbage, frankly, these look very stunted to me. I'm almost tempted to pull them out and just move on, but um, going to give them a few more weeks. They don't look well, I think. Just really the prolonged cold stunted them. But look, my first radishes I'm harvesting with you guys. This is exciting. So we've got radishes, we've got spinach, and we've got um, asparagus that's in season right now. Um, I could be harvesting my kale and I could be pulling some of my bok choy as well. Another interplanting I did last year that I really enjoyed that I'm repeating again this year is I'm interplanting my bunching onions and with my cabbages they only grow vertically so they're only taking up a tiny bit of kind of square footage at the soil level to be honest and uh, the cabbages will hopefully fill in this space really well this should look beautiful by early July which is good timing because that's when I've got a garden tour happening here at our garden that is open to the public so besides this earliest bed, so then I've really started allocating my space for all of our main season crops. So this is going to be our cucumbers. We only grow this one trellis of slicing cucumbers. It always ends up being more than enough. I'm going to put a couple of our tomatillos right there, and then I'm going to put our third tomatillo one row down. I've got peas in this next row, and I've got some radishes and some more direct seeded onions that are very sporadically germinating here. So this bed will uh, feed us June through part of July. We'll clear it out and plant it with fall crops. And that will kind of coincide with some of these onions opening up too. And we, um, we did get our tomatoes in the ground. I got them in the ground last week. They're still acclimating here. They were really big. I started them, I don't know, March 1st, something like that. I think I'm still starting them too early. It's, it's a bit of a bad habit I have, I guess you could say. Our potatoes, these are gonna be our pickling cucumbers. Um, and one other exciting thing we've got, we are growing artichokes for the first time. Um, not sure I'm gonna get anything, but this is how you learn. So um, I started these in February sometime and hardened them off, left them outside as often as possible. They need exposure to cold to bud well. Um, so stay tuned for more updates on those. And for those, I plan on interplanting a bunch of flowers on either side here to really fill that in. Um, flowers are going there. This is gonna be a flower bed. And then really, you know, as usual, I tend to take these triangular areas of all the beds and those end up being a mixture of um, sometimes fennel, as you can see in that bed there, uh, and then eggplant and then lots of flowers, basil, um, peppers and things like that. So um, things are coming along little by little. Um, this is another bed that I haven't planted at all, but it's gonna have our watermelons and I'm gonna plant interplant it with flowers this year. So I'm excited to see how that goes. I'm pretty much just gonna let the melons run all over the ground. I don't plan on training them at all. So that will be kind of an interesting, interesting experiment. Well, even though it's a slow start, I guarantee by this time next month, the garden is gonna look absolutely, completely transformed. And I look forward to sharing that with you. Thanks so much for watching and have a great month in the garden.